So let's get started. So hopefully you can all see my screen that I'm sharing right now. So you've got that open here. Yeah, so here's a look at what we'll be covering in today's session. Firstly, a quick introduction to version six and how it came about and the main new features and developments. We'll then be giving you a demo of the dashboard in action with a short video on the EMS integration and toolbar. Finally, we'll have some time at the end for some questions that you may have. We know that many of you will be keen to know when these upgrades are available. The deployment plan at the moment is to have a practice from each area as a pilot. Then once that practice is happy with the new release, we will start to roll out across the area. The exact detail of this is yet to be defined as there's still a lot to do, such as forms changing, etc. So it's mainly to happen in stages um, and this is why we can't give a date yet. But please do know that as soon as we can, we will let you guys know. So um, an introduction to version six. So the version six dashboard came about um, from several feedback sessions with groups of practices, including those in Surrey towards the end of 2020. This feedback ranged from just clinical system integration to smaller issues like navigating lists of requests and filters and reducing the number of clicks for practices dealing with large numbers of requests on a daily basis. We've maintained the existing functionality that you're familiar with, so what we're going to be looking at today covers the additional features and the updated layouts. I'm now going to pass over to Holly to open the demo dashboard um, so you can follow along as we explain. Thank you, Nikita. So I'm going to um, just open the demo dashboard here, so hopefully you can all see that. OK, perfect. So what you'll notice most of you are already familiar with the dashboard um, on version five or versions earlier than that. So the general concept of the dashboard hasn't changed. The only the main things that have changed are the layout and the general design of it. So it's quite sleek, a lot sleeker, you know, more um, user friendly. So the main things that you'll notice are the navigation. So when you first log in, your work list now appears on this side menu here. So rather than having the big list at the top with the kind of active numbers in, all of your work lists are here and all of the additional features within the dashboard, depending on if you're a user or an admin, these now sit here in this hidden drop down menu. And again, if you're an admin, you'll see the full range of um, options. And if you're a user, you'll see some, but not all of them. But that's where all of those options now sit. So the main lists here include the same as previous versions where you've got the work list, which is personal to the user that's logged in um, and you've got the new uh, requests parked, waiting, all open and assigning. The new things that we've added are we've split the new, re new requests and new reply. So what that means is that when you have a new request, it means it's brand new. And then anything that has been replied to by a patient, that, me that goes into a separate list. So you can differentiate between an ongoing conversation and a brand new query. So you've got those two lists separate now. And you also have a list just for the breached alerts. So anytime you have an alert that comes up on the dashboard, you can prioritize that in that list just by looking at this tab. And you can also keep track of things that you've assigned to and from yourself to other people and that have been assigned to you. So lists and requests. So normally when you're looking at the dashboard, you'll just see a list of all the requests here. And what you would do is basically click on the name of the patient and it will take you in to see the request. That's what we call list view. And on this dashboard, you've actually got another way that you can look at the dashboard in order to help you triage things more efficiently. So up here on the right hand side in the corner, you can see there's a button that you can swap to card view. So if I do that, the same thing happens. So you've still got each request in a list, but you can basically preview the content of each request in a little box. So you're not leaving the list, you're just summarizing it. Um, and this allows you to go through a list of requests, decide what is the best way to deal with it, and then triage it appropriately from there without having to click into each request multiple times, go back and you know, go in, go back out onto the list. Whilst you're previewing the query, you can also quickly assign things. So if you're working in a way where an admin group is going in and assigning things to other people in the in the dashboard they can just go into card view work through each request preview it and then assign it quickly and easily what also you can do is when you're in card view if you pin a request so you have this little pin icon here you're basically saying i'm pinning this for myself it lets other people know that you've pinned it but once you've pinned a request in card view 
you'll be able to make changes to it again without going into the query, but you can change things from the list. So you can change it from new to parked or waiting, or you can close it. You can change the priority to urgent or back to normal. Again, you can assign it from here. So it just means that you can make quick changes to requests from the list without having to go in um, and click in each request, view the whole thing, go back out, go back to the list. So that's card view. Pinning also works in the normal list view. So it's just a way for you to say, I am looking at this request currently, and it will have a little icon with your initials on it to indicate that you're currently looking at it. So right now, there's two people on this one. Um, I'm on this one, and you can see my initials, but other people will also see that my initials are on that request, so they know that I'm dealing with it. When you pin something, it only stays pinned for about 30 minutes, and the reason for that is when something gets pinned, other people might assume that they can ignore it because it's being dealt with. In, just in case that person who has pinned it doesn't get round to doing it or they might forget or for any reason, it unpins after 30 minutes just as a fail safe, basically. So the other thing that we've added are filters. So what you can now do is filter the way that you look at the dashboard based on whether you're working through a particular kind of query. So um, you've got request type. So you can look at just specific questions, what status it's in, whether it's new or parked or waiting. Um, and you can combine these filters as well. So you can say, I just want to look at new queries, you know, new health reviews, new asthma reviews, for example. Um, you can look at filters for who something has been assigned to or assigned by. And you can filter by alerts that have appeared on the queries as well. So if you just want to filter by something that's been you know, unread by a patient for too long or that's been parked for too long, you can do that. And when you combine filters, you obviously add them depending on your own needs. And when you go into a list, so if I apply some filters, you'll see that it's kind of like put them at the top here. So this is currently showing the filters that I'm using. If I go into a query and then I exit that query, I don't have to worry about the, the filters clearing. They'll stay on there so it remembers what the last filters you applied were so you don't have to constantly reset them every time you go into a query and back out again so again that just helps you to work through a list of requests um, and stay kind of in your workflow so what else have we got so there's the requests themselves if we go into this one from we've got a fake patient here called sarah wallace the request itself still contains all of the normal features um, on version five. So you've got the ability to reply to the patients. You can ask the patient to reply back to you and you can have an ongoing conversation. You've got the quick responses, the attachments, the library, and also the links to the forms. One of the new things that we've added is global quick responses, which we know that lots and lots of people wanted. So rather than just having quick responses for each specific query, you can add 10 global quick responses across the whole dashboard now. So if I show you an example, these are specific to this particular question, which is get help for any health problem. And they'll be at the top of the list of quick responses. But if I scroll down, it's got global here and then you can see these global ones and they will be visible on all the queries. So you can now use those as well. And I will show you where you can set up those global quick responses um, in a little bit. So that's the reply. That's the, the only thing that's changed in that is the quick responses. You can add notes, you can do videos as normal, um, you can download the query as a PDF. One of the main things about version six, obviously, is the integration with the patient demographic system or PDS, and also the integration into EMIS, which we are going to be covering in more detail after this bit of the session. But just to kind of cover it briefly, um, you can copy the entire query into, directly into EMIS. Um, basically, it will go into the patient's record and it will code everything automatically. So any information that will be in a health review, any scoring, anything like that, or text-based information will get coded automatically. And so you would normally do that by clicking this button here, which says EMIS. When your site, in, when a site specifically goes live, at that point when it's upgraded to version six, we connect it to your clinical system and then you can start uploading things into it. 
If you want to pick and choose what parts of activity within a query get sent into the patient record, you can use this button called copy episode. And that allows you to pick and choose different parts of the episode that you want to be copied. So if I show you a query that's got more activity on it as a better example. So we might have one here that's got more. So yeah, you can kind of see here this um, button basically allows you to switch off the bit of activity. So if you had multiple replies on a query, you know, the patient had responded, the practice had sent a couple of responses, maybe notes have been added. So if I add a note to this query, for example, let me just put a bit of um, information on there. When I add that note, I might want to copy this into EMIS, but I don't want that note to be on the patient record. So if I select copy episode, I can switch that off and that only that part will get copied into EMIS. So you don't have to worry about patients seeing the internal notes that you've added if you don't want them to. And you can still do the normal PDF and print options as well. So those are the changes on the integration side of it, but we will go into more detail about the integration after this section. The only other thing that's worth mentioning is the contact information of the patient. So we now have the integration with the patient demographic system or PDS. So whenever you receive a query into the dashboard, it will automatically show the patient's details in the top right corner here. So they'll have entered in their name and their date of birth and everything, but the dashboard will automatically search for them and display their NHS number and their registered practice. If they are verified, it will have green ticks next to the name and date of birth. This one is a fake patient, so that's why it's got triangles next to it. So they aren't technically verified, but that's because they're not a real person. In most instances, with your sites when they're upgraded or with live sites, the patients will be verified and it will find them in the NHS database. It will display them as verified with green ticks next to the information. And it might even be that they're not a registered patient at your practice, but you'll be able to see that immediately. So as soon as you get a query, you know if they're one of your patients or not. So you don't have to go off and cross reference it um, against the patient record and see you know, if they are somebody that is actually registered with you or not. And the other thing is if the patient for any reason isn't verified, you can manually edit the NHS number. So if you know it's one of your patients and you've got a record of their NHS number somewhere, you can manually put that in and it should then manually verify the patient. So those are most of the main changes. There are a couple of other things that I just want to quickly show you. So if we go to the menu here where we drop down, if we go to form options. Then again, we've got the normal thing here, but we've got this tab called global quick responses. So this is where you would go in and add those global ones. It's exactly the same process as adding the, the quick responses on version five or the other versions of the dashboard that you're used to. Um, and you can have up to 10 global. So all you do is add a new one, put it in the normal way and then save it. And that will be visible on all queries. And something else that we've added is the reports on the dashboard. So we've basically made this very, very in depth now. So when you go into reports, you'll see a list of all the different ones you can you can view and it will show you things like the current status of the dashboard. So in real time, it will give you data on what's currently happening, how many things you've got queued, what you've already dealt with today. You know, what is the, the, the kind of response time? Um, things like that. You've got request analysis and that will kind of give you a breakdown of, you know, the average number of requests that you receive per hour of the day or day of the week and that sort of thing. Uh, so there's loads and loads of stuff in here. I'm not going to go through all of it in massive detail just because it will take me forever otherwise. <laughs> but you can see. So you have things like outcome analysis that just gives you um, a way to kind of track what are the outcomes of queries that are being resolved on the dashboard? Signing combinations, breach analysis. This is really helpful, actually. So it will allow you to see when you've assigned KPIs to a query, what percentage of your queries on the dashboard breach their timeframes or not. So that can be quite helpful. 
Um, and you've got things like age analysis and patient survey as well. So those are also on version five, but we've added much, much more in-depth reports on here. So it should hopefully mean that um, any stats that you could potentially need, you'll be able to access them at any point as long as you've got access to the dashboard. So there is um, one other thing that I wanted to go through, which is the form routing. So in this section, if I, I just show you again, I went to the menu and then clicked on form routing and then I'm in local routing right now. So this is the only thing that you'll normally see when you have version six. So there are other options in here, but we're not looking at that today. So if we just ignore these for now, we'll just stick to local routing. What this does is allows you to set up what groups on your dashboard have access to certain forms. So normally when you're setting up the access rights on the dashboard, you have to do it for each individual user. So you basically say, Joe Bloggs has access to this many forms. Um, if Joe Bloggs is part of a group, he will be able to see the forms that the group has access to, but you might not know what, you know, if all the members of the group have access to the same forms, basically, you just want to make sure of that. So if you go into local routing, you'll see this uh, table and it will show you each query and each group. And then if you tick in the box, it will then enable access to that group for that form. So anything that's got a green tick against it, basically saying this group has access to this query. So it's just a quick way for you to set up the access for multiple people at once. Um, you can still do it individually, but this just makes it easier if you're working in a way where you have lots of groups on the dashboard and you want to kind of control what they can see. So I'm going to go back to the main dashboard home page. And I think I've just about covered all of those new features for now. So what I'm going to do is move on to the next part. So we're going to look at the EMIS integration in the toolbar. So I'm just going to hand off to my colleague Nikita. Yeah, so, yeah. so far we've covered what is available on the current rollout of version six. So now we're going to look at the EMIS integration and toolbar. As these features are not live on this demo, we're unable to show them in real time. So we're going to show you a short video which explains how this will work. OK, so bear with me. I hope this works, but I'm going to share my screen um, with the video and I'm also going to enable the sound. So if anyone does have any issues hearing this video, just let us know in the chat. It should hopefully be OK, though. So let's get started. In this demonstration, we're going to show you how the EMIS integration works, as well as the toolbar application Footfall Connect. We'll start by explaining Footfall Connect. This is a new application feature that can be used alongside the Footfall dashboard to perform tasks such as sending a patient a message through SMS or email, initiating a video consultation, and viewing a patient's footfall request from a toolbar without having to open the dashboard. Something that might be particularly useful to clinical staff who prefer to work from the clinical system rather than the dashboard. You do not need to use Footfall Connect to be able to export episodes from Footfall into the clinical system. It's an additional feature available with version 6 that can be used alongside the dashboard to perform popular tasks. To access the toolbar, you will have an application downloaded to your desktop, which can be accessed through this desktop shortcut. For the application to work, you must have EMIS open. When you first open Footfall Connect, you will be asked to log in using your Footfall dashboard username and password. This is the only time you will need to log into Footfall Connect unless you choose to log out of the application. The application will collect the organisation code from EMIS and match with your Footfall dashboard. You should see the name of your practice, your practice website address and the ODS code here on the login screen. Once you log in, you will see the Footfall Connect floating toolbar appear, and this can be moved around your screen to your desired position. When you have an active patient open in EMIS, you can choose to view a list of the active patient's footfall requests, send the patient a message by SMS or email, and start or book a video consultation. If you select the three dots, this will change your options to log out of Footfall Connect or exit. Logging out will require you to log back in using your username and password again, but by just choosing exit, you avoid the need to do this when the application is opened again. We'll have a look at how this works in more detail later. 
For now, let's look at what has changed on the dashboard with the integration and how you can export a patient episode from the dashboard into the clinical system. If you want to work on the dashboard, you can open your dashboard in the usual way, whether or not you're using the Footfall Connect application. Here we have a patient who has submitted a contraceptive pill review. In order for the dashboard to be able to connect with EMIS and for the clinical system integration to work, it's important that the patient has been verified and that their NHS number is present. If this is not the case, this can be manually added just by clicking on the pencil icon. You can see we have a new option here to swap patient. Selecting this will swap the current active patient in EMIS to the patient that we have here in Footfall. If I select this and then open EMIS, you'll see that the active patient's details change and we're also given a notification at the top here to tell us that the patient has been successfully swapped. This gives you a quick way of accessing a patient on EMIS if you're reviewing a request on the dashboard. Now let's look at how we can export this episode into the clinical system. So I select EMIS at the top. And here we're given a breakdown of information that will be exported into EMIS. This will include any clinical coding relating to the form that the patient has submitted, the patient's selections and text responses. And if the patient has included any images with their form or if there are any internal notes, these will be attached on the bottom here too. You can select what information you want to be exported into the clinical system by using the toggle buttons. You can also edit the text fields, add text or remove text that may not be important to the episode. In this case, I'm removing the options the patient did not select on the form. This helps to ensure that the clinical system is not overloaded with information. Once you're ready to export the episode, select Send to EMIS. You see a notification appear at the top. And if we open EMIS and go into the patient's consultations, you'll see the episode has been successfully exported to the patient's record. Another option that's available to you as part of the integration is show current patient. Selecting this will connect to EMIS and retrieve the footfall request relating to the active patient in EMIS. We have Rose Harper open in EMIS, and if I select show current patient, it will show us all of the footfall requests submitted by the patient on the dashboard. You'll also see at the top here, you have the option to send the patient a message by either text, email or both. And this is a feature that is available through the reply feature on the dashboard too. Now let's go back to the toolbar and how this can be used whilst working in EMIS. The toolbar is separate to the integration and is a helpful tool designed for those users who like to work from the clinical system. You can see our current active patient is still Rose Harper. Let's say I want to have a look at Rose's recent footfall requests. I select recent requests and we're shown a list of footfall requests that relate to Rose. By selecting one of these episodes, it launches the dashboard so that you're able to review the episode. Send message gives you the option to send the patient a message either by email or SMS, and underneath you have some options. You can copy the message to email so that it's recorded in the clinical system. You can also see that there are the same reply options as you have on the dashboard. Allow a patient to reply, allow a patient to send files, and require patient reply, and you can add an alert to it too. Sending a patient a message in this way will create a closed request on the dashboard. Once or if the patient replies to the request, it will come in as a new reply. Then you have the option to start or book a video consultation. Again, you can send the link to join the meeting to the patient either via text or email. And if we select start, this takes you straight into the consultation to wait for the patient. Like the dashboard, you have space on the right hand side to type notes and the end consultation button at the top. You'll be asked for the appointment outcome and you have the option here to save the notes from your consultation to the episode.
These consultations are recorded on the dashboard as a closed video consultation request. That concludes this short demonstration of the clinical system integration with EMIS and the Footfall Connect application. Thank you for watching. Great. So hopefully um, that was helpful for everybody. Um, thank you for, for watching that. Um, so now that we've covered most of our topics for today, we're just going to open up the floor for any questions. And I've noticed that quite a lot of questions have come through on the chat. So anything that we haven't been able to answer in the chat, we're just going to go through and see if anyone. Um, so feel free to come off the mic. Um, give us a shout if you've had a question that you were, that weren't wasn't able to be answered in the chat or if you've got anything that you'd like to add. Um, yeah, I'm just, sorry, Holly. I was just um, I was just replying to Cassie's message about the SMS feature. So um, <laughs> the SMS feature will take the number from EMIS. So um, the toolbar can be used whether or not the patient has submitted a request onto Footfall. Um, so it can be used to send a, a patient or an SMS message ad hoc. So it will take it take the number from EMIS. Um, and then I think the other question from Sean was to do with the presets NOMED codes. So I, I believe, Nikita, they're already going to be completed, aren't they? So um, we will have a suite of pre-coded forms that are available if you wish to use them. They won't be added to your website without your consent. So it will be something you are offered as a part of the upgrade. Um, and these are just general health reviews um, that can be used towards QOF and will have SNOMED coding. Um, you can manually add the coding to your forms yourself as well. That is an option on the dashboard. Um, but again, it's completely up to you whether you want to use the pre-coded ones or ones that you would like to code yourself. So that is the option for both. Thank you very much. So we have a question as well um, about EMIS PCS. So I can see that EMIS PCS is like a Scotland only version of EMIS. We will follow up with the developers and make sure it works there as well. And we'll come back to you on that to just double check. OK, so we've had Cassie message. The integration looks great. Feels like this will take the usage to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. So the majority of things that we've added to this version of the dashboard are based on feedback from practices that we've had over the last um, you know, 12 to 18 months. So we've been gathering all of that feedback from things that we wanted to improve on, things that practices have told us that they need, especially considering the fact that everything's moving to remote working these days. Um, and the demand on practices to have digital communication is so much greater. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely should be much, much ha more helpful for you guys. Um, yes, yeah, so timeframes, Cassie. So at the moment, we don't have a, a solid concrete date on when this is going to be rolled out because we're still currently in the process of testing it with our pilot sites. Um, so at the beginning of the session, I think we mentioned that we are basically piloting it with certain practices, pilot practices in, in every area. Um, and then once we've gone through that testing process, we'll then start to roll out with practices in each of those areas. Um, so until that point, we won't have a specific date, but we will keep you updated. So just bear with us <laughs> and we'll let you know as soon as it is available to be rolled out to everybody. Does anybody else have any other questions about any kind of features that we've shown you today? Anything about the integration or anything else at all to do with the dashboard? Um, Adam, you've well, asked users be able to mark themselves and um, so yeah we'll use be able to mark themselves out of office in version six so there isn't an option to mark yourself as out of office per se there is um the option to disable a user um so another member of staff can disable you so that you can go on holiday and you won't be able to assign forms to that particular individual and that kind of thing but you won't be able to assign yourself as out of office someone else can do that for you to you. Give the floor open for a couple more minutes, um, but we are nicely ahead of schedule, so we will stay here for a bit if anybody does have any questions. Um, but otherwise, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, we really appreciate your time to come and have a look at what's coming in Footfall. Um, and like Corey said, if you do have any questions, you can pop it to that email address, pop it in the chat, or open yourself up now. Um, and we will see you and speak to you very soon.